Anton, haven't seen you since we were kids. Yeah, great to see you. What have you been up to, Ringo? Oh, not too much. In a few bands, you know, I was with the Beatles. Yeah, they were pretty popular, right? Yeah, they were. Married Barbara Bach. Oh, that's great. What have you great. been up to? Um, well, I've been in, I've been in prison. Ah, well, I'll see you next time yeah. you didn't give us a call. All right, thanks. Anton, why didn't you tell him you were the drummer on the show? Well, I was, uh, I was a bit ashamed. <laughs> Our first guest was a member of the Beatles from uh, 1962 until uh, they disbanded in 1970. And uh, this morning he announced that he is forming a brand new band for a national tour beginning in Dallas next month. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Ringo Starr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that's a pity it didn't work. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, and my cholesterol's great. Now, good for you. Congratulations. It's uh, great to have you here. Great to meet you. And this is, I think, one of the rare times when, if I call you a living legend, it actually applies and means something. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the band and so forth that you announced this morning. Uh, what, why did you decide to do this? How long ago did you start thinking about it? And well, I've been thinking about it for, like, ten years. Mm -hmm. I'm a real slow guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and... Um, David Fisher, uh, Pepsi went to David Fisher because Pepsi are promoting this, and David Fisher is the, pro the promoter, producer actually. And uh, he came over to London and he said, uh, Do you want to go on tour? Uh -huh. I said, Let me think. And then I said, Yes. Yeah. And uh, then I decided, How would I like to go? You know, and I didn't want to go with me just in the front and, you know, with the band behind you and me up all the time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have fun. So uh, I just called a few friends up, and they were all enthusiastic, and here we are. Joe Walsh, Nils Logfram, Dr. John, Billy Preston, <laughs> Levon Held, Rick Danko, Clarence Clements. <laughs> and it, you, now usually when somebody does something like this, it, it follows uh, a recording, an album or something. Is there going to be an album? Is there an album now that's being finished? Or No, there's no album uh, right now. Yeah. But uh, the, the album would be if we record it live. That, that'll be the album. Uh, and how many cities is this going to be? 30 cities, 43 days. Oh, man. So this is, it's not a real neck not breaker, real but it's, it's tough, though, isn't it? When was the last time you did anything like that? It 1966. Tore... Yeah. Uh... Before they were born. <laughs> and what were the conditions like then in 1966? I mean, if that's truly your last memory Well, no, if that's when we band. toured. I've played live since then, but yeah. that was the actual touring, you know. Yeah. I've done one night, as that's all. Well, what was the best part of, of all of that? What's the, what's the thing that occasionally you get up in the morning and you think to yourself, Jesus, that was great fun, or man, I, I kind of missed that. Or do you have any thoughts? I like think that? the the best thoughts were actually playing and the reaction of the crowd. Yeah. I mean, they didn't. No one came to hear really. They just came to get excited, and that was good. Yeah. And did, did was that a, a problem from you know keeping together as a group? Uh, pl it was a problem music? playing in the end because we couldn't hear each other because now they have monitors, you know, mm -hmm. on the stage where we just had those little amps. Yeah. And I had a little kit so they could see me, yeah. and I could only nod my head because my hands were busy. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> now uh, they have you know those huge speakers out there so we can hear each other. What happened to us? Uh, we were just like playing it strictly straight all the time, uh -huh. so we could all stay together. Yeah. And so, and we were turning into bad musicians, really, you know, because you know, if I was playing, it would just, bang, bang. But if I went to go on the toms, it'd go, bang, bang, bang. Hey, give us a break. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know anything about that. What is? <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> well, these are tom toms, you see. I know give that. Us some tom. Do what I did. Back. Now do your fills like I would. You wouldn't hear it. Oh, I would. It would be, it would and be lost. Like, oh, you yeah. know, it's like in the, the other three, it's like, what happened? So in the end, I could just hit the snare drum, and that was all. At the end of, at the end of a show, or sometimes you would do two shows, one in the afternoon, one, one in the evening, would you guys get together and you'd say, geez, that went pretty good, or it didn't go as light? No. Or did it, no, no, we wrote the show on the way to the first gig, and that was it. We yeah. all lose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, you, there really was not much you could do, do to adjust no. it from one? No. Yeah. You must have been at one of them. I was, uh, I was in Indianapolis. Everybody was in Indianapolis. And there was, a, uh, there was a story after the shows there, and you probably heard this if in every city you attended, um, that you stayed up all night and, and drove around town with a, uh, a police officer. Yeah. Now, is, was that true, or that's, was that just... That's one of the true stories. Yeah. And why Indianapolis? Why a policeman? Why... It was a friendly policeman who thought, uh, who let me drive the police car. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, I said, yeah, and we were driving around. The funniest bit that no one else knows is that we were chased by another cop car. Is that right? And we had to drive up an alley and turn the lights out and hide. And I'm hiding with this cop in an alley. So we didn't get caught. Now, see, that would have been bad if you'd gotten gunned down in an Indianapolis alley in <laughs> some kind of police shootout. You don't think of that. Or the other thing, you could have made citizens' arrests all night. I could have arrested the cop who let me drive his car. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, bear with me here for a second. This is one of those questions that will be impossible for you to answer. But it seems well, to me... Why would you ask it? Well, because I think, it's, I think it's important that the record shows this. What? I don't know what that means either. Uh, it just seems to me that uh, musicians and bands will come and they will go. Some will be really successful, some not as successful. Some will have small impact, no impact, whatever. But the phenomenon of you guys will never happen again. Does that I don't, seem fair to you? I don't believe that. Why not? Well, they said that before we happened. It'll never be as big as uh, Frank Sinatra, or never be as like Elvis, and never be like us. I mean, I really think someone will come up soon. Someone will come up that will capture... And the... I want to see it. Yeah. But the... Uh, you oh, don't be silly. No way. But, I mean, strictly speaking, in a musical sense, maybe. But in, in, a, in a way that will affect an entire generation in several different aspects of their no. lives, perhaps not. <laughs> what did I say? No way. Uh, so I told you this, uh, this couldn't well, be possible. Well, that's real interesting, David. Anything else? Well, that must have dawned. <laughs> but that must have dawned on you, don't you think? No, it hasn't dawned on me. I have great hope that someone will come through, and I want to see it. Yeah. Um, what was? Uh, what did you? Th what were your impressions of Ed Sullivan? Did you know anything about him before you came? No, over? it was a complete fluke. We did Ed Sullivan. Complete we were, fluke? Yeah, we were coming in from Sweden, and he was coming in from America. And uh, he'd never heard of us, and we'd never heard of him. Mm -hmm. And there was 12,000 fans on Heathrow Airport, and he came in, and he says, Buck me those boys. <laughs> <laughs> so he was just there and he saw, just the, saw crowd. the crowd. And he yeah. said, Something's happening. And it just happened that when we arrived, uh, we had a number one, so it just mm -hmm. went off from there. I mean, yeah. you know, we were a bit worried coming in at the beginning because, you know, we'd had two records that failed. And then we had a number one, and then we did the show, and it just went on from there. Wah, wah, wah. You, you ended up, by, uh, the initial, it was like three shows you did for him? Two. Two one shows. here and one in Miami. Mm -hmm. and, and people used to love to lend us their boats in Miami. That was great. Really? Yeah. Oh, sure, I'll drive like the cop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and when you did, the, after you did the first show, or after you met Ed Sullivan the first time, yeah. I'll Did you make fun of him? Did you go to your dressing no, room and talk about it? No, we didn't make fun him? of Ed. Uh, we were too busy having fun. But he, his introduction was, you know, we're in America and we're expecting, here they are, the greatest, it's the best band in England, and they're coming on now. And Ed said, here they are, the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles, Beatles, as I recall. Yeah. Well, you'll recall better than I. <laughs> um... <laughs> This is a weird It's note. very strange. Well, it's this cholesterol testing that's got everybody... I think you're very brave. Um, once you tell them you'll be getting the letters, tell, get it down. Tell me about the, uh, the television show. This is uh, Shining Time, Time Station. Station. Well, I'm sure you've all seen it. <laughs> <laughs> well, four of you have seen it. Uh, it's a children's show. It's on PBS, and it's... Uh, I'm Mr. Conductor, Mr. Magic. Mm -hmm. It all happens in a train station, and... We sort of talk with the children, not at them. Mm -hmm. And it's done, you know, do this, why? Because I'm the dad, you know. Uh, we say, you know, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> and uh, it started in England five years ago. I just narrated the stories and called Thomas the Tank Engine there, and it became real popular. Yeah. And then we brought it here and made it bigger because it's America. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and you've been nominated for an Emmy, I understand? And I've been nominated for an well, Emmy. That would be nice. That would be good. Thank you. It's just my year. Yeah, well, good. I, I hope you get that. I do, too. Yeah, there's no way. You don't want to go over there and uh, play the drums for, like, a... Yeah. No, he doesn't. I don't think he does. Okay. Ringo. Ringo. I'm sorry. Thanks, I'm Dave. sorry. Thanks, Dave.